what do you what do you say we take a peek at some drilling techniques? Are you down there? Okay, let's look at some different ways of drilling holes, man. Got to do that sometimes for geothermal energy to harvest the earth temperature. Let's give it a shot. So you notice here in your course, the GRD systems. Let's take a look at it. This is the future here. Here's another great video brought to you by Brayton Energy Canada. For more information, please visit www.energyconsultingadvice.com. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Geothermal energy is a cheap source of energy that is becoming more and more state-of-the-art. The standard technology to mine geothermal energy is based on vertically oriented boreholes. This is expensive, presupposes a well-trained drilling team, and causes very often damage to land and gardens. It's therefore not surprising that drilling costs regularly represent more than 50% of the entire investment hindering potential customers from investing in geothermal heating systems. The people behind geothermal radio drilling, a division of Traktotechnik, Germany, had these issues in mind when they developed this new technology. The Geodrill GRD-4T system is a technology that effectively diminishes waste because drill cuttings are rather pressed into the borehole's wall than mined. Furthermore, it is compact and agile. It can be used even in closely spaced property because its designers aimed for maximum flexibility and consequent noise reduction. GRD combines the benefits of vertically oriented borehole heat exchangers and horizontally installed ground heat collectors. The borehole heat exchangers are radially installed. All dimensions are used to provide sustaining and efficient heat supply. Hence the mutual influence is minimized and the amount of extractable geothermal energy is very consistent and rewarding. The GRD system squeezes out what's possible. The GRD system consists of a motor unit, the drill rods, the displacement bore head, and a rotary wreath that is mounted to a central drill chamber. Two skilled and well-trained people can easily handle the system. The prefabricated drill chamber is easy to install on the property. Without much trouble, the machine is ready to use. A rotary wreath connects rig and drill chamber. Now the system can be rotated horizontally 360 degrees. The angle of inclination is also adjustable with a range of between 25 to 65 degrees. A special bore head is used to drill and ream the borehole in one step. The number and depth of the borehole heat exchangers can be easily adjusted to the estate's setup and local geology. It's not necessary to screw the drill rods together anymore because the rods are equipped with bayonet connections. This saves time and money. In a second step, a borehole heat exchanger is installed. While the cement induction hose is removed, heat conductive cement fills the borehole from bottom to top, fixes the heat exchangers, and hinders a thermal shortcut. Thermal shortcut would be, you know, uh, the well, cancellation where the returning fluids uh, conduct into the uh, production fluids. So they, they they call it cancellation, or you diminish the efficiency of your system. Now you are ready to install the next borehole heat exchanger. You just have to change the drill rig's direction and inclination. Then the heat pump is connected to the borehole heat exchangers. I, see, I hope you're getting the idea that there's 
there's blue and there's red and the blue's cool the red's hot and it circulates through that heat exchange the earth the GRD system is compact agile operator friendly easy to transport and ready to use in a very short time it is designed for slanted radial drilling to utilize the estate's setup in all dimensions it is friendly to property and gardens and provides maximum flexibility even in closely spaced property allows the quick and economical installation of borehole heat exchangers the GRD system is the efficient and intelligent way to mine geothermal energy yeah I agree that's the future right there the Sauland pyramids in Lennestadt Megan as part of the second construction stage the Sauland pyramids Galileo Park is being built here one of the park's attractions will be a large fish pond There was your drill rig out there on the collar. Uh, uh, just a little background on these tetrahedrons here, or uh, these pyramids. Um, don't don't do it. <laughs> I thought that was a good idea in some of my early geodesic work. And uh, you have a whole bunch of, in, of unusable space out here at the points. These, you know, that's the pyramid. Uh, maybe good for the pharaohs. But at a certain scale, like you see here, this is the, with the doorway. Okay, that's how tall a guy is. Okay, that's about where he stops having usable space inside the building. So, uh, big waste of space, just kind of a heads up. While the pond has to be kept free of ice in winter, it also has to be kept cool in summer. A conventional heating and cooling technology would have been too expensive and not in accordance with the park's energy concept. A decision was made to install a modern geothermal heating and cooling system. The required geothermal balls are to be launched from a small island in the middle of the pond. The only geothermal ball rig meeting these specific demands is the Geodrill 4R from Tracto Technic, which has already been successfully applied to supply private properties with geothermal heat. The small, compact and powerful ball rig is placed directly on the small island, which would not have been possible when using a larger rig. The innovative GRD method, GRD stands for geothermal radial drilling, combines the advantages of horizontally installed ground heat collectors and vertically installed ground heat pipes. With a maximum bore depth of 40 meters, ground water bearing strata are hardly affected. That's why the method meets the license requirements. That's uh, you might want to capitalize on that little comment, GRD, geothermal radial drilling, as you see here, uh, gets you below infrastructure. Uh, you can take better advantage of the property or the uh, estate that you're working on and not disturb the uh, overlying vegetation is, or landscaping. Even for bores in water protection areas. Altogether, this project includes 10 bores of 50 meters length each and a diameter of 144 meters, which are installed out of a drilling chamber set up at a depth of up to 40 meters. To penetrate harder soil layers, the bores are carried out using an air-driven down-the-hole hammer. Once the required depth... You see here, this is a spin-on uh, connection, and that's 
you're, the one that we saw in the previous uh, video was a bayonet or a snap together. Has been reached. The drill rods are pulled out. Coaxial heat pipes are pushed into the bores. Here's where you want to notice too that the wall of the pipe is corrugated to uh, create more um, movement in the fluids so that they spend more time in circulation such that they pick up or exchange more heat, lose heat or gain heat, whichever you're trying to do with your system. The corrugated heat pipe design guarantees turbulent brine flow as a maximum heat pipe surface which keeps the heat extraction performance high even with low flow rates. Even water can be used as a heat transfer medium. The heat transfer medium circulating inside the heat pipe is pumped through a circuit without a heat pump and releases the heat via heating mats on the ground of the pond. The generated amount of heat is sufficient to temper 200 square meters of water, which means free of ice in winter and cool in summer. The heat performance corresponds to the heating volume of a larger single-family house of 16 kilowatts. After that, the spaces between heat pipe and borehole wall are filled with a heat conductive thermo cement. The heat pipes are installed triple dimensionally, in all directions and angles of inclination, even under existing buildings. By storing the solar energy and the rainwater, the geothermal heat is regenerated quickly, which results in an above average heat extraction. Due to the radial heat pipe arrangement, the mutual influence is lower than with vertical heat pipes and the thermal gradient is high. To start the next bore, the bore rig is simply replaced manually above the rotary ring. The GRD system allows for bores with an inclination angle between 35 to 65 degrees. The larger the spread, the lower the mutual influence. Once more, the Geodrill 4R bore rig has proved its flexibility and efficiency. GRD is the efficient and intelligent way of extracting geothermal heat for single and multi-family houses because it utilizes the exhaustless solar energy in the upper earth crust which is constantly being recharged by the sun like a battery charger. With smaller properties it is possible to place the drilling chamber right next to the house and establish the balls slantwise beneath the house. Good on you mate with your uh your tools there, I like the, the drill, you know, made in Germany, but uh, the replenishment of the earth temperature is about 2% solar. It's, uh, remember it comes from the core of the earth? Invest into the future. Become independent of oil, gas and the like. The environment and your wallet will be grateful to you. That was in England, no doubt, eh? <laughs> What do you say we look at uh, so a little larger application and see uh, that, you know, the be need to find out how much that little drill would cut, during the drilling would, would good cost. That would be probably my uh, incentive to get into a local install installation in a residential. But uh, here's a little larger application. And, uh, you know, you're talking millions of dollars for this guy. Let's see, let's see how it works. Sherrington introduces the next generation of HDD. Horizontal Directional Boring. HDB. 
the need for longer and larger diameter crossing, while meeting the intense scrutiny and compliance of new environmental regulations, has provoked Harrington to revisit one of its earlier developments for installing large diameter pipelines. Technology originally developed by Charrington in 1978 and subsequently shelved after our invention of a more cost-effective method referred to as pre-ream and pullback. Meeting the needs for larger and more environmentally sensitive projects, HDB is again being applied as means of installing directional drilled pipelines. HDB significantly increases the limits of directionally installed pipelines, benefiting both land and shore approach crossings. The principles of the HDB process involves attaching a drilling module to the leading end of a non-rotating product pipe or casing. The module having the means of rotating the cutting bit, a pressure sealed articulating joint allowing the leading end of the module to be redirected during the course of drilling, providing directional control along a predetermined course. Also contained within the drilling module are internal pumps designed to pick up bit night slurry and cuttings directly behind the advancing bit, transporting the cuttings back to the surface for process and recirculation. This essential process ensures that solids are picked up and transported out of the borehole, preventing solids from collecting within the annular space around the pipeline. As the drilling fluid is pumped through the drill head, the annular pressure increases slightly until the suction pump is started. Once the suction pump is started, the annular pressure returns to approximately the static pressure. The bit night supply pump and the suction pump are synchronized at the surface by monitoring the annular pressure with the sensors within the drilling module. Controlling and balancing the static pressure ensures that pressure does not build within the annular space, causing fracturing during drilling. The HDB method utilizes a pipe thrusting clamp anchored in a subsurface pit or alternatively a ground surface location to slowly advance the product pipe and drilling module forward as the formation is penetrated. After the pipe assembly is thrust forward, the clamp is pulled back to accommodate a new pipe segment. The new pipe segment is lowered into the launch pit and welded to the previous pipe segment. The clamp is then secured to the new pipe section and the drilling assembly is advanced once again. Locations that will accommodate pre-welding the pipe string in segments, or in its entirety, can be placed on rollers and threaded through the clamp assembly, allowing a continuous feed of the pipe string. The ability to understand the future is based on one's profound understanding of the past. Charrington has been a name synonymous in pioneering and development of horizontal directional drilling technology for over 40 years. As a result of this ongoing commitment, Sherrington has developed not only the foundation, but the method and standards practiced by contractors worldwide when performing HDD services. For more information on horizontal directional boring or Sherrington's pipe thrusting equipment, contact Sherrington today. Who's going to do their paper on horizontal directional drilling? And what does Charrington have that might be suitable for residential uh, installations? Let's look at what's going on on a little bit smaller scale here. This is a two-part video on horizontal directional drilling operations and safety. 
The first part presents horizontal directional drilling machine operation and safety, while the second part presents safe operation of directional boring tracking equipment. In addition to the two parts of this video, there is a guidebook containing information and exercises that reinforce the concepts presented. This is part one of two part video on horizontal directional drilling operation and safety. This section presents selected operation and safety practices for Vermeer directional drilling equipment during setup, boring, reaming, and pullback. When used properly, your Vermeer Navigator Horizontal Directional Drill will give you many hours of productive service. It is equipped with useful safety features to help protect you from serious injury. But, safe work practices prevention. You must exercise caution and use good judgment. Your safety and the safety of other crew members depends on it. This video is not a substitute for a thorough and complete reading and understanding of the machine operator's manual and its safety instructions. Before operating the machine, always read the operator's manual, know its content, and follow its instructions. All crew members and operators of Vermeer Horizontal Directional Drilling Machines must understand the entire directional drilling process. Everyone must follow safe operating procedures so that the horizontal directional drilling projects are completed safely and successfully. Allow only responsible, properly trained people to operate the machine. Carefully supervise any inexperienced operators. Advise anyone who will operate it to read the operator's manual carefully and study this two-part safety video and its accompanying guidebook. Additional training material is available from your authorized independent Vermeer dealer. Personal protective equipment must be worn while operating a directional drill. Always wear a hard hat and safety glasses. A highly visible safety vest must be worn on job sites near traffic. Electrical insulated personal protective equipment helps protect the operator and crew if there is an electrical strike. Seated operators of Vermeer directional drills are required to wear electrical insulated boots but are not required to wear insulated gloves. The tracking equipment operator and anyone else working near the boring head and along the bore path must wear lineman's boots throughout the directional drilling operation. This is important since the ground above the drill string and near the machine can become electrically charged if a strike occurs. Anyone placing the voltage stake in the ground or anyone standing on the ground and touching the machine while the machine is operating must wear both electrical insulated boots and gloves. Some machines have a seated position for driving the machine. These machines have rollover protection and seat belts. It is important to always wear the seat belt when driving the machine. It will help protect you in a rollover by keeping you inside the protection of the rollover protective structure. Wearing the seat belt will also protect you from being thrown from the seat if the machine suddenly changes position on uneven ground. When unloading a machine from a trailer, be sure the trailer is on level ground and drive slowly off the ramps. Do not unload the machine if the trailer surface is slippery, which could cause the machine to slide off the trailer. Before you start drilling, there are a number of procedures that must be done to prepare your job site and the machine. Place four safety cones approximately six feet from the corners of the drilling fluid mixing system and the drilling unit. Position the cones with the safety signs facing outward to warn approaching spectators or other workers to stay away since the area could become electrically charged. Only allow properly trained personnel wearing appropriate personal protective equipment inside this defined area. Test the strike alert system on the Vermeer Horizontal Directional Drilling Machine. It is designed to sound an alarm if you contact an electrical source so that you can take appropriate action. It does not warn you before making a strike.
Do not operate the machine unless the strike alert system is fully operational. Follow your operator's manual for complete test and setup instructions. You must wear electrical insulated personal protective equipment appropriate for your style machine when staking down the machine. When operating the machine, remain seated with your feet on the platform at all times while boring. This helps protect you from electric shock. Keep all workers and spectators away from the drill. Machine is equipped with a radio controlled remote lockout system for the crew at the exit end of the bore. When activated, the lockout command prevents drill stem rotation and thrust and flow of drilling fluid. Turn on the handheld remote lockout transmitter and test the run and lockout functions. Pressing the green run button will transmit a command to place the drilling machine into the run mode. Confirmation that the machine is in run mode is indicated by the green lamp on, steady, and the audible alarm sounding for two seconds. Pressing the red lockout button will transmit a lockout command to the drilling machine. The green run lamp will change from steady to a flashing mode until the drilling machine sends a confirmation signal that the machine has successfully been locked out. Only after confirmation has been received at the remote handheld transmitter will the flashing green lamp go off and the red lockout lamp turns on steady. An audible indication of three short beeps repeated three times will sound when the lockout has been successful. If lockout is unsuccessful, the red lamp will not come on, the audible horn will sound continuously for 60 seconds, and the handheld transmitter will vibrate. Test it for proper function before operating the machine. This test procedure is explained in the instructions provided in the operator's manual. Test your communication system. Use good quality two-way radios with sufficient communication range. Remember, miscommunication while using two-way radios can result in unplanned drill stem and tool startups, possibly resulting in death or serious injury. To avoid confusion, the radio at the exit location must be assigned to one person. This is the designated person who must always communicate with the machine operator. Communicate by name to avoid confusion. Received messages must always be confirmed as correct by repeating the message back to the sender. The sender must always require confirmation that the message was received and sent. When selecting tools for your drill, only use tools and accessories which are approved by Vermeer Manufacturing Company. Larger machine models use tooling which couples directly to the drill string without a starter rod. All other machines are manufactured with hex collar or spline lock connections. These machines must only be used with hex collar or spline lock tools or accessories. These connection systems do not require pipe wrenches or a powered breakout device to change tools. This eliminates the potential hazard of being struck by the wrench if unexpected drill string rotation occurs. Do not substitute other kinds of connection systems unless you are running a mud motor. Fluid flow specifications for mud motors may not be compatible with the spline lock design. For best performance, you may need to directly couple the mud motor to the drill string. When attaching a direct coupled or hex collar drill head assembly to your machine, do not hold the tool and use the rotation of the machine to connect the drill head assembly. Shut off the machine and then spin the tool onto the drill stem by hand. Hex collar connections must then be secured using the hex collar. Tools with a direct coupled connection must be tightened using the power vise on the drill. Never use pipe wrenches or tongs to add or remove direct coupled tooling or drill stem at the machine. Always use the vise on the machine. So now you can, you know, look at this whole video if you'd like. There's 21 minutes of it. But it uh, gives you the idea that there's some smaller units that are available, which there's a used one out there that uh, you might be able to pick up pretty cheap. But uh, one aspect of geothermal, huh? residential uh, drilling applications. But uh, we got to consider the, what happens on the big scale. There's still the, the large scale or the uh, commercial aspect of geothermal energy.